that's just a basic little map like I've done. Here are these, there were 15 in mine. I hadn't finished them. And 15 on either side. Yours could be a completely different shape or size. And then there were one, five here. So I've got to put those in. Oh, oh gosh, what did I do? I've done too many. One, two, three. Well, let me erase that. Let me find my eraser. This one, I did too many over here. Okay, and so then, what we're going to do, after you've drawn your palette out, just each of your colors, we're going to make a swatch, um, not too heavy-handed with it. And so let's say you have your palette like this. Before you start painting, lay your tubes next to where your colors are, or if they're already laid out. Maybe you have a map in there already, I don't know. If you don't, and you don't know the names of them, it's okay, but it would still be nice to do this. You'll see what the colors look like on the paper. Um, so just, just a little swatch. You know, like this. And just go to the next one. So you can see what you've got. And you want them to be transparently used. So you can see the white paper through, you know, uh, through there. And what makes watercolor glow and beautiful, if you use it correctly. See, I'm getting a little thick there. Not that I never would use it that thick, but kind of hard to tell exactly what that color is. Um, if you use them transparently, the light passes through the color and it bounces back off the, um, through the paint. So it gives watercolor a unique glow that we really don't get in other mediums. So just make a little swatch like this. And after it dries um, in pencil, you can write your label. Um, and this is something nice to have because I even, there are times I think, I don't know what this is. In fact, I had a pretty big mess. I cleaned this thing up before, before anybody got here. I had to take some, dig some paint out that I didn't even know what it was anymore. It was so dirty. I messed it up so much. And so I did, I re, I've got a, I did one of these and I left it, so I'm going to do another one. Now see, those colors are sort of dirty because I've dipped into them, but I still I basically know. Did I leave that out? I did. Okay. Now, this is an example of how you can correct. See all that paper, that, that uh, water I just put on there? and then just press down don't rub then you got to let it get bone dry okay now those colors were not stainers they came up not all colors will come up but those did but that's an example of correcting you make a big mistake get clear water load it on the spot press down and then don't fool with it till it dries back up because otherwise you'll get in there and it'll get real ground into the paper. And you know how people are always talking about muddy watercolors? The only thing that really makes a muddy watercolor is messing up your paper by, uh, see that's too thick. See that? That is what I'm talking about. You don't want to use paint that thick. You can't see the paper through it. It's, it's too opaque. So I'll suck that up. I may have to put some water on it to get it up. Yeah, there we go it's re-revealed. I might still get a little of that up. Okay, so that's about right. That's a very, this is a, uh, this color has got all over everything. It doesn't ever dry because it has honey in it. It's a different brand. It's Veronese Green. It's by Sennel Yeh, and it is a messy color. Yeah. Use it when you try to figure out what colors 
well when I sometimes what color to use or what color to refill my palette with if I can't remember which one is which there's one thing about watercolor pigments there might be a color that looks the same you know they may have two or three tubes of paint they actually kind of look the same the color itself the hue but the property of the paint could vary one of those yellows might be opaque and one might be very transparent even though they're the same color so to speak uh, then you might say okay I want to use all you may decide I want only transparent paints on my palette there are artists who do that so they're going to pick the paints that and it'll tell you on the tube um, if something's transparent or okay So the paints have a lot of uh, properties, and as you can see, when I'm talking, I make mistakes. That's when I make all my mistakes, and painting can be a wonderful solitary and very uh, kind of contemplative experience. It's fun to paint with other people, but it's a wonderful thing to do by yourself. And it's, you will concentrate, you get in a different part of your brain, so when you're trying to talk and do your painting, I often make mistakes. So y'all have to just forgive me. So there's those. Okay, and so then over here, just 